Whoa. Look at these prints. This was a big guy. Yes, he was a really big guy. Parked nearby, maybe around the corner, walked through here and went in through the side door. Yeah, and the lock's still intact. It wasn't Jimmy. She must have left it open. And what's all this? These are rocks from the garden. The killer left them like this. It's a message. He's toying with us. Some sort of code, but I haven't been able to figure it out yet. You think the killer stopped here in plain view of the neighbors, went rooting around in the garden, collected a few rocks, and then arranged them carefully on the grass? What do you think? I think he was looking for a hiding key. I found it. Dale Bidervik? They call him Dale the Whale. I never heard of him. He spends a fortune every year making sure nobody ever hears of him. He buys newspapers just to keep his name out of them. Well, my, 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 it's the boys in blue. And the former boy in blue. Forgive me if I don't get up. Uh, now, now, now. Come on now, Bentley. I'm sorry. He, he hates cops. Mr. Beiderbeck, I am Captain Stottlemyre. This is Lieutenant Disher, and this is Adrian Oh, Monk. I know Adrian Monk. How long has it been, my friend? Seven years. Seven years. You look good. How do I look? You look great, Dale. Hardly recognize you. Mr. Beiderbeck has lost 104 pounds since March. It's my own patented diet. High protein juices and shakes. Of course, the hard part is keeping it off. Mr. Beiderbeck, we are investigating the murder of Judge Catherine Lavinio. I believe you knew her. Knew her very well. She was a political slug, and I wasn't shy about saying so. Her antitrust ruling cost me $210 million. And this was back when $210 million was a lot of money. Whoever killed her did the world a favor. Is this your bat, Captain? Do I look like I play a lot of baseball? Well, how do you explain your initials DB on the handle? Well, the question really is, how do you explain it, Pee Wee? Maybe you put them there. Are you accusing us of tampering? Wouldn't dream of it, but I could probably convince a jury of it. The first 20 numbers on my speed dial are all lawyers. Shall I call one? Where were you last night? About 10.30. Last night? Let me see. 10.30? Um... Oh, yes! I was here! I haven't left this bed in 11 years. Even if I could, I can't make it through the door. I'm five and a half feet wide, if you haven't noticed. More of me to love, Sharona. And I know what you're thinking. Is he really that big? What's under those covers? I would uh, confirm and swear under oath that my patient weighs over 800 pounds. He's not faking anything. You have motive? You were identified by name on the 911 call? A child in the neighborhood saw you in the judge's house that night. Oh, my God, that sounds like a strong case, Captain. What do you think, Monk? I think you killed her. Prove it. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay. Maybe we're looking at this all wrong. Maybe he killed her in his apartment. And then he somehow moved the body back to her house. No, what about the 911 call? She made it from the house. Right. What about liposuction? What? Liposuction, yeah. He, he light put himself down to like, uh, I don't know, like 400 pounds. Down the elevator, across town, killed the judge. Or how did he gain all the weight back? Reverse liposuction. Oh, my God. Yeah. He just pumped it all back in. You think that's possible? I don't know. Should I call a doctor? <laughs> no. Let's keep our reverse liposuction theory to ourselves, okay, Randy? <laughs> and there's the starting gun kicking off the 25th annual Chronicle Marathon San Francisco. Over 6,000 runners in the race today, and it is perfect running weather. And there is Tom De Mawa, number 534. What a story he is. The legendary proud lion. He's a two-time Olympic champion, and he's come all the way from his homeland of Nigeria to run in today's event, which he's referred to as his final lap. Of course, Tom De threatened to retire before, but you know, if this does turn out to be his valedictory race, 
It'll be quite a day to remember. We'll, of course, be checking in with his progress all through our continuous coverage of the marathon. Hello, Quinn. Trevor, what, what are you doing here? I, I thought you were running the marathon. Do you have an alibi for 7.55 this morning? <laughs> 7.55, I would have been on 8th Street. Anybody see you there? Oh, yes. About a thousand people. See, I was running a marathon. You realize we have several ways to verify that. Good, because the sooner you clear me, the sooner you can catch the bastard who did this. That's my card with my office number. That's my home number. If there's anything I can do to help, Thank please you. don't hesitate to call. I'll be in touch. Good luck with the investigation. Okay, that's all right. How'd you do? Excuse me? In the marathon, how'd you do? Three hours, 41 minutes. Personal best, actually. I've been training like a demon. Well, I just need some information. How many people uh, ran in the marathon today? 6,111. Um, how do you keep track of them all? Oh, that's all computerized. The runners are all issued one of these, and uh, it attaches to the top of their shoe. There's a teeny tiny little computer chip inside there. And we've got scanners at the starting line and another at the finish line, and they read the computer chip. It's all very modern. We've got everybody's time right down to a tenth of a second. Hmm. But what if s someone left the race and then came back later? <laughs> well, we'd know right away. I mean, we've got checkpoints all along the route. We had scanners every mile to keep track. Um, we're interested in a runner named Trevor McDowell. Oh, McDowell. Number, uh, 948. The police were asking about him earlier. There he is. Yeah, he ran it in three hours, 41 minutes, and 22 seconds. <laughs> That's a really respectable time. About Mr. McDowell, did he miss any checkpoints? Oh, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> nope, he ran the whole course start to finish. Paced himself beautifully, though. The Zaleski alibi checks out. He was in bed making a phone call at the exact time of death. Yeah, it's not the ex-husband. No, sir. So, uh, where does that leave us? It leaves us with McDowell. The boyfriend? Yep. He checked out. He ran the whole race. Okay, let's say that McDowell did pass the chip off to another runner. That was your idea, sir. You're damn right it was. You're thinking Tonda. No, no, their times don't match up exactly. On who? All right. Here's my idea. Let's say there were six runners. Six? Yeah. Tande, yeah. McDowell, and these four guys, Harvester, Blanchard, Crow, and Davidson. They passed the chip back and forth among them. They were all running in the vicinity and... Like a conspiracy. Well, no. I've worked the time out on this graph, passing it back and forth. It, the time works out almost exactly. What do you think? Yeah, this is worth looking into, sir. It's all... No, it's not. It's insane. There is absolutely no connection between those six men. Yeah, you're right. There's... <laughs> I was just playing devil's advocate with that. Uh... Hang on a second. Stop the tape. All right. What's that right there? Go, go back a little. Is that a dog? Yeah, it's a poodle. Maybe he put the chip in the dog collar. That's a little poodle. Can a little poodle run 26 miles? Maybe he drugged it. I mean, it's on drugs. Yeah. I could call a vet.